Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Five years ago, Senator Ted Cruz used some of my graphs in a hearing. He showed how the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration had altered the U.S. temperature record to turn cooling into warming. They accomplished this by altering past temperatures to make them cooler and by altering recent temperatures to make them warmer. The blue line in this graph represents the actual measured temperatures, and the red line is the altered data which gets released to the public. George Orwell said, He who controls the past controls the future, and he who controls the present controls the past. Government agencies are hoping to control the politics of the future by changing the temperature record of the past. Not surprisingly, after the hearing, the fact checkers came out. They said it was absolutely not true that government agencies were changing the historical temperature record. Their argument was that government agencies were altering the data for good reasons, and therefore they weren't actually altering the data. So in other words, the fact checkers confirmed my graph and confirmed what Senator Cruz said. And then, right after confirming the claim that the data had been altered, they turned around and said, the data hasn't been altered. Very Orwellian and exactly what I've come to expect from fact checkers. But claiming that altered data wasn't altered isn't a very compelling argument. It was pretty obvious that they were tampering with the data, so they came up with a new strategy. The new strategy was to get five different supposedly independent groups to come up with the same graph. And since all five of them came up with the same graph, it would have to be true. Look how similar those five different trends are. These five graphs from different agencies line up down to the last wiggle. If five different independent groups came up with such similar graphs, that's a pretty strong indication that all of the graphs are accurate. The Earth must be heating up out of control, and it's undoubtedly due to your SUV. But wait a minute, there's a little problem here. This map from NOAA shows all the places where they have daily temperature data from the year 1920. They have almost no data from South America, none from Antarctica, very little from Africa, and very little from most of Asia. The vast majority of the good data is from the United States, which only makes up 2% of the Earth's surface. And for most of the Earth's surface, they have essentially no high-quality data at all. The lack of data creates a huge error bar, probably several degrees. So how did all five data sets become so similar? with every single squiggle down to the last detail. Given the fact that most of the Earth's surface has no high-quality data from 1920, there's no possible way that these graphs could be this similar if they were actually independent. Four years ago, Senator Malcolm Roberts from Queensland was concerned about this very important issue, so he started asking NASA some questions. Senator Roberts sent a letter to Gavin Schmidt at NASA saying, in Australia, we have considerable concern about temperature adjustments made by NASA over many years, including charts from Iceland. In dropping the temperatures for the early period, the Arctic warm for the 1930s and 1940s appears to have been removed. What is your specific reason for doing this? Gavin Schmidt at NASA then responded to Senator Roberts and of course brought the Australian press into it as well. Peter Hannum from the Canberra Times wrote this article on November 21, 2016. NASA chief slaps down climate skeptic Senator Malcolm Roberts. You hold a number of misconceptions. You appear to hold a number of misconceptions, which I'm happy to clarify at this time. Dr. Schmidt told Senator Roberts in letters and emails obtained by Fairfax Media. The claim that JIS has removed the 1940s warmth in the Arctic is not correct. The claim that NASA tampered with decades-old Arctic data is a favorite conspiracy theory among global warming skeptics. Wow, conspiracy theory, that sounds really bad. We better go look at the data from the NASA website ourselves. All of the graphs I'm about to show you are snapshots of images taken directly from the NASA website. This is the version of Reykjavik Iceland temperatures from the NASA website from the year 2012. You can see that it was very warm around the year 1940, and recent temperatures have been cooler. And here's another version of the same graph from around the year 2014. You can see that the warmth of the 1940s has disappeared. This was the earlier version, and this was the later version. Here's a more recent version of Reykjavik Iceland temperatures from the NASA website. The gold line is unadjusted temperatures, and the blue line is adjusted temperatures. 
you can see that the adjustments are removing the warmth of the 1940s. Here's another graph from a different location in Iceland. Once again, the warmth of the 1940s has been removed. And here's another location. The warmth of the past has been removed. And another location. The warmth of the past has been removed. And another one. The warmth of the past has been removed. At every location in Iceland, NASA has adjusted away the warmth of the 1940s. Now let's look again at what Gavin Schmidt told Senator Roberts. The claim that JIS has removed the 1940s warmth in the Arctic is not correct. And then Peter Hannum from the Canberra Times threw in, The claim that NASA tampered with decades-old Arctic data is a favorite conspiracy theory among global warming skeptics. This is some conspiracy theory. If we go to the NASA website, we can see exactly what they did. The 1940s used to be warm, and they made the warmth disappear. Now let's look at the actual response which Gavin Schmidt sent to Senator Roberts to see what's really going on. Gavin Schmidt didn't actually deny that the data was altered. What he said was, Firstly, in the graphs, you show the data is quite clearly and correctly labeled as originating from GHCN. For your information, GHCN stands for the Global Historical Climatology Network and is a project of the NOAA National Center for Environmental Information. This is a very important piece of information because Gavin Schmidt is saying that the data in their graphs isn't actually their data. They're getting it from NOAA. In that letter, Gavin Schmidt blew their cover. Now we know that these data sets are not independent. NASA is actually getting their data from NOAA, and in fact, none of these data sets are independent at all. They all use pretty much the same data, and the quality of the data going back 100 years is not very good. So Gavin Schmidt blew their cover about data independence. The data is not independent at all. Now let's look some more at the Canberra Times article. Here's another quote from Gavin Schmidt. I'm aware of who Malcolm Roberts is, and the only surprise is that he is in fact a senator. Gavin Schmidt from NASA got caught by Senator Roberts using tampered data. So Gavin responded with a nasty comment in order to deflect away from his data tampering. Then Peter Hannum went on. In an email, Trusty Johnson, senior meteorologist with a specialty in historical climatology at the Iceland Meteorological Office, told Senator Roberts that the temperature adjustments are quite sound. So Peter Hannum just told us that the data wasn't being altered, and now he's saying the exact opposite. He's saying that the data is being altered, but the adjustments are sound. So Peter Hannum just contradicted himself, but the actual situation is much worse than that. Eight years ago, UK climate skeptic Paul Homewood wrote a letter to the same Trousty Johnson, asking him about the data adjustments being made by GHCN. Here's the response from Trousty Johnson to Paul Homewood. Hi Paul, regarding your questions, were the Iceland Met Office aware that these adjustments were being made? No, we were not aware of this. Has the Met Office been advised of the reasons for them? No, but we are asking for the reasons. Does the Met Office accept that their own temperature data is in error and that the corrections applied by GHCN are both valid and of correct value? If so, why? The GHCN corrections are grossly in error in the case of Reykjavik, but not quite as bad for the other stations but we'll have a better look. We do not accept these corrections. Does the Met Office intend to modify their own temperature records in line with GHCN? No. So in 2012, Trousty Johnson at the Icelandic Met Office said that the adjustments were grossly in error, and now he's saying the adjustments are quite sound. That seems pretty suspicious. I wonder why Trousty Johnson changed his mind. That's the end of part one of this story. Toto hates to leave you hanging, but part two is going to get really interesting. You can visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com.